Suddenly, a terrified scream rings out from up ahead. You both look ahead to see a young woman laying on a park bench. Crouched over her is a thin, bald figure in tattered clothes feeding on her. The fact we just meet one is just common occurrence now. It swivels its head around, blood dripping from its mouth. You finally see its gaunt, pale face under the sickly light of the street lamp. And then its eyes look right at you. Oh, it's a fair. Oh, he's feral. He does not look like Adrian. Okay, it's been a minute, but we are back. With the next part of Bloodbound on Choices, if you haven't seen the others, catch up right here. Our character got hired. She got her dream job. Things were looking good. She was about to begin a paycheck. She was in her bag, except come to find out, we walked in on her boss, her new boss, sucking on someone's neck. Yes, he was going full vampire mode because guess what? He is a vampire and we also found out that New York City that right now has vampires running all amok all up in it. There's not that many of these, there's like 160, but they're powerful people. And they're doing things. And then we went to a big fashion show from a vampire, mind you. We're on our way home, walking with our little vampire boss now because we're just chill. We're, we're, just, we're just not going to ask questions. It's, 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 we, just, we just want our money. And we come across another vampire who looks like he is a moisturizing forever. His skin's cracked. He's just biting on someone's neck on a park bench. What? So we're about to get to the bottom of the situation. Yes, but I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, please consider giving the video a like as it helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's start the Bloodbound drama. A feral! Get back! Hiss! Uh, we need to- I'm gonna be honest. You will run- <laughs> You grab Adrian's arm and pull out- <laughs> We'll go call the police. Come on. That's... There's no time. The feral growls low and guttural as it releases its grip on the woman. Out. You know what? Every woman for herself. Our sis needs to save herself. This poor woman, she's already on the bench. She's... What are we gonna do? And rushes straight towards you at top speed. Oh no, this is like Dawn of the Dead level speed. The remake. Rrr. Ah, it moves with an impossible speed, bounding across the park and driving. How is it on us? Where is our man? Adrian? Amy? The creature hunches over you, its breath rank. We said, sir, please, six feet back, your breath stinks. It's maw wide. It's making noise. Adrian grabs it by the neck and jerks it off you. <laughs> Get off her! The feral spins on Adrian, slamming him down on the ground at straight the surreal and it snarls as it attacks Adrian with pure rage. How is this thing so strong? Amy, grab a weapon. You quickly look around for something, anything. A blade of grass? I'm not sure what we're supposed to use here. Oh, what if we stake it? Let's stake him. Grab a large branch. We can use it as a stake here. You toss the branch to Adrian, his hand shoots out to catch it, and he drives it into the feral's chest, impaling it deeply with the jagged point of the branch. Die. Oh, you tossed Adrian the right weapon. Okay, that's what I was thinking, because I was thinking, okay, the rock might have been a better choice, because we can, like, smash its head in. But in the vampire world, and the vampire lore that we all know in our universe, you stake it. So I figure we got a little tree branch, a little, little stake, make it ourselves. Yeah. The frail jerks back with a hideous screech. Its skin crack and stiffens and turn into a turns to a pallid gray. It looks a little sad, but you shouldn't have jumped on us. You should have minded your own business over there. Its entire body disintegrates into crumbling ash, leaving behind nothing but silence and the beating of your racing heart. Dot dot dot. Adrian leaps to his feet and rushes over to your side. Are you okay? Yes, are you? Yes. I like how, well, I don't like, I feel bad for her how it, no one knows about vampires. It's, you know, it's no one knows. Neither, do, you know, our character especially. Then she gets hired by one, discovers her boss is a vampire, goes to a fashion show by a top vampire, and then all of a sudden we're now in the park and seeing a feral vampire. It's like we saw one and the floodgates opened. He enfolds you in his arms and pulls you close with your chest against his. You can feel the rapid beating of his heart. 
I, you're okay, you're fine, you're alive. You feel yourself calm down one breath at a time. Oh, I need to, I need to drink a water. That was intense. You'll feel yourself calming down one breath at a time. Thank you for what you did. Adrian nods and hurries over to the injured woman who is still lying on the park bench. He feels for a pulse. Oh, she's alive and breathing, just unconscious. She'll be okay. But is she gonna turn? We should call 911. Yes. He makes the move to pull out his phone. Do you want me to call? It's probably best if it came from you. Yeah, you dial it on your phone. Yes, we need paramedics in Central Park on the path near the band shell. This woman was attacked by... Adrian shakes his head. She was attacked. Thank you. You hang up and turn to Adrian. So what the hell was that? We need, we have questions. We need answers. Adrian sighs. I know this is not the t- what you signed up for. I suppose I owe you a bit more information. That was a feral. Yeah, I got that. But what are they? Are they vampires? In a sense. What does that mean? We have more creatures? More mythological creatures? The process of turning a person into a vampire is fraught with risk. If it goes wrong, they become a feral instead. Well, who turned this person into a vampire then? Or was attempting? And you have no control over that. We have some. If the vampire is welcome as part of a clan, they'll get a brand. That brand protects them from becoming feral. And if they're not part of a clan, then they're clanless and they could turn feral at any moment. Back up a sec. What's this about a brand? Yeah, what's a brand? How does that an elaborate insignia burn into his forearm? Are these like magical or something? It's infused the blood of my maker. It forges a personal connection that keeps my consciousness tethered to my body. Okay, he answered my question. It keeps me from becoming one of them. (laughs) One of them. Ferals are as dangerous as they are pitiable. Mindless, soulless, driven only by a desire to feed and kill. Can they be saved? And they're not just dangerous to humans either. Their bites are infectious to my... Oh, their bites are infectious. They ain't got me. You'd have turned into one too? And you'd already be dead. It very well is Dawn of the Dead over here. Dawn of the Feral. The attacks all over the city. The ones in the news. Adrian nods. Why are they happening now? Where are these ferals coming from? I don't know for certain, turning new humans into vampires without the approval of the council is strictly forbidden by the pact. Clan leaders may only create a new vampire if it's replacing a vampire that has killed and only with the vote of the council. But someone has been betraying the pact. I'm gonna say it was that slime ball. Creating clanless vampires that turn feral, putting us all at risk. Do we know who? I have some suspicions, though I don't know for sure, but what I do know is... When you're dealing with clan leaders, you must be absolutely sure before making accusations. You came at the king you best not miss. Exactly. You hear sirens and see the flashing lights of an ambulance approaching on the roadway alongside the path. Oh good, here they come. You start waving them down, but Adrian puts a hand on your shoulder. We must go. Oh, I just want to be sure they find her and that she's okay. It's important that I keep a low profile. Oh, for business reasons, personal? Both. Besides, we need to get you to your debriefing. We we never talked about that debriefing last chapter. The ambulance pulls over and the paramedics jump out. Adrian takes you by the arm and you both slip away into the darkness. Hopefully they save that poor girl. He leads you to the other side of the park and towards the elegant Metropolitan Museum of Art. You gaze up in wonder at its impressiveness, the wide Depths, oh my gosh, we got ours. Interest is my favorite museum, but it should be close at this hour. So what are we doing here? Not to us. He leads you around to an unobtrusive side entrance with a numeric keypad. What are we doing? Checking out the mummies at 3 a.m.? Not exactly. Is this what the debriefing thing is? Adrian's hand hesitates near the keypad's buttons. Do you mind? He raises his eyebrows, waiting for you to look away before pushing a button. Oh, this was not like, it's a secret code. Oh, of course. I should, don't pee, don't be, don't be doing none of that. Look away. Apologies, it's a private entrance. You hear him pushing several buttons in a pattern. The door swings open with a metallic kiss and you step inside into part of the museum you've never seen before. Together, you stroll through the shelves, your eyes fascinated by the dusty books. Oh, it's like, okay, so this chapter title was called Library, by the way. Huh, what are these? What is this place? 
This is the Musea Sanguia Sanguis, which is what? What is this? The place where the true history of the world is kept. Oh, you round a corner to find an aristocratic gentleman in 18th century garb eyeing you curios- curiously. Amy, I'd like to introduce you to Scholar Jameson. He is the keeper of the library. Oh, thoroughly pleased to meet you, madam. Oh, nice to meet you too, Scholar Jameson. As I spoke in a formal, he extends a hand to you. Um, shake his hand. For a moment, Scholar Jameson looks a little confused by your hand eagerly shaking his. Then he raises it to his lips, kissing it formally. An acquaintance of Adrian is always welcome here. Oh, I thought he wanted like, I thought, okay. <laughs> Maybe I should have just done a little curtsy or something. What kind of collection do you have down here? Scholar Jameson twiddles his fingers together and rocks back on his heels amused. We specialize, I suppose you could say, on the bloodier aspects of history, like vampire history. Not exclusively, no, simply a more complete history. I suppose I can share some highlights. He glances at Adrian, Adrian nods. For instance, we possess the actual (laughs) guillotine blade that was used to execute Marie Antoinette. Wait, wasn't, wait, she wasn't a, oh, no, 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 my dear. But the blade was owned and deeply loved by a well-known vampire until his untimely end a few years ago. <clears throat> Scholar, I apologize for coming here on such short notice. Urgent matters can't be scheduled conveniently. I presume you have come in need of a debriefing. That's right, it's us indeed. All right then. Scholar Jameson puts his hands on either side of your head, pressing his long, elegant fingers against your temple. Sir, we you need the permission before we do all this. Um, no need to fear, young lady. It's a simple process. He's the best and it's very quick. You won't feel anything. What do you mean? What are you doing? Debriefing is a psychic art I mastered in the course of my travels. It requires tremendous focus and discipline, which I'm afraid few of our kind have. Uh, wait a minute. Are you erasing my memories? Well, perceptive, aren't you? I can see why Adrian chose you. Hmm. You jerk away from Scholar Jameson's hands. Adrian, you need to explain. You know my secret, Amy. All our secrets. We can't just let you continue on knowing what you know. So we're just going to get our mind wiped? It's not just about protecting my people. It's about protecting you. So this whole night, everything you share with me, was you knew it was only temporary. Why did you even bother taking me with you? Immortality is only temporary. One day there will be nothing left of you, but... <laughs> He dragged us. <laughs> but you will still have lived your life, and the act of living is what matters. I don't, it's not that simple. Believe me, Amy, my world is dangerous and terrifying. What you've been through tonight is just the tip of the iceberg. What I'm offering you is a chance to go back to the life you lived before, safe, secure, free. Do you consent? Okay, we got, we got, you know, we got some consent over here. No. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, this is again. No, I won't do it. That night, the scary parts, the wild parts, everything has made me feel the most alive I think I've ever felt. Your world, your kind. I'm excited to be a part of it. I want to stay and I want to be your assistant, your real assistant. Amy, she's so excited for this. She said, I'm ready to be your bride. Agent raises an eyebrow skeptical. I can, aren't you afraid? Uh, am I afraid? After her spiel she just did, I would say she's not afraid. I'm exhilarated, excited, maybe even nervous, but I'm not scared. I feel like my eyes are open to what's really happening in this city, in this world, and I want to learn more. I want to help you figure out what's happening with the ferals and do something to stop these attacks to save more people like the woman we saved tonight. Adrian cocks his head to the side. Taking you in, his eyes seem to see right through you. The lies. Okay. Really? Really, you can keep your knowledge. No one's ever chosen to not get debriefed before. Oh. Scholar Jameson shakes his head regretfully. I fear this won't end well, old friend. We can always debrief her if she decides to once at a later date, but I believe it's worth giving her a chance. I won't let you down. Well, Scholar Jameson, thank you for your help. I'll see you soon. Oh, dear. It was a pleasure as always. We're leaving already, but this place is amazing. I'm sure it's full of secrets just waiting to be discovered. 
Adrian glances up at his watch and looks up at you with a smile. I could give you a quick tour for the sunrises and I wouldn't say no to getting to know you a bit better. Don't we have work tomorrow and she wants to read books? Girl, you're not a vampire yet. You need to sleep. Professionally, of course. Baby, it's been a really long night. I think I just want to go home and get some sleep. I understand you've had a lot to take in. We need to, we need to rest. That's putting it mildly. I'll walk you out. Adrian leads you back to the door and you step out onto the street. You and Adrian step out of the museum side entrance to quiet streets, birds chirping, and occasional taxis speeding by. I'm actually like shook at her. Well, are we that shook that she chose not to be debrief? I mean, I can see why she would want to keep the information. I mean, I can totally see why. The sun is just about to peek over the city and the sky glows with breaking dawn. Dawn already. Yeah, you need to get back inside. You fight back a yawn. I can't believe I was up all night, though I guess you're used to that. I am and now I must go rest, recover, and consider tonight's events. Okay. Take care of yourself, Amy. Have a go. Okay, we, we have a weekend. Okay. Oh, all right. You see him glance at the horizon, wincing at the light. Do you wish you could stay? Adrian pauses, thinking he smiles wistfully. I wish we could go drink a cup of coffee in an outdoor cafe and feel the sun warming us from millions of miles away. I wish I could walk with, oh, with you through a sunny a park on a sunny summer afternoon. I wish I could, but I can't. He takes a deep breath, straightens himself, and shakes his head. He puts a hand on your shoulder. Go get some rest. I'll see you at 8 p.m. on 8 p.m. on Monday? I take it I'm on the night shift now. Well, if you want to be my real assistant, I'll see you there. Oh, we work in night shifts. We got the night. We got the graveyard shift. Literally the graveyard shift because they're undead. So even before you can finish your sentence, he's whirled away and disappeared around the corner. Back at home, you crawl into bed and crash hard. We're going to have to switch our schedule up a little bit. She's going to have to get on that me schedule. Who knows how many hours later, the sounds of a video game penetrate your brain, waking you up. Ugh, so loud. Why is it dark? What time is it? You crack open an eyelid. It's 9.30 p.m. You slept all day. You're going to have to get used to this. But you're going to have to probably be up around like 6.30, get ready, and get to work. But it's fine on the weekends. Whoops. You walk out of your room to see your roommate Lily on the couch. Killing zombies on the TV and drinking wine straight from the bottle. Oh, I've got you now. Lil? Lil doesn't look up, just keeps aggressively shooting zombies. It's bloody. Boom, headshots. Hey, is there a reason you need to play with the volume all the way up? Lily sees you and pauses the game. She takes a swig of wine and offers it to you. She looks sad. Sorry, blowing off their heads and surround sound makes me feel less unfathomably depressed somehow. Oh, trouble on the Melanie front? There is no Melanie front, not anymore. She broke up with me to get back together with her stupid ex. Oh, Lily, we really haven't known Lily that much in the story, but she seems like such a good character and good person. You sit down on the couch and give Lily a hug. She buries her head into your shoulder and gives a little sniffle. Sorry, I'm such a mess. That other girl did not. Oh, what's her name? Melanie Floppany. She did not deserve you, Lily. You were so much better than her. Don't be sorry. That really sucks. Yeah, killing zombies is a good distraction, but I feel like a damn about to explode any second. She sighs deeply. I know Melanie was kind of a jerk in the end, but I really liked her. She got me. It's not every day you meet someone who can appreciate a good Zatara reference. I know. Gush, look at me, throwing myself a total pity party. I promise to be way less of a mopey mump tomorrow. Wanna kill some zombies first? Lily grins and hands the controller. All yours, I recommend the shotgun. <laughs> Sounds good to me. The two of you laugh and kick back, blowing away zombies together, but what neither of you notices is... Just across the street on a fire escape, burning in the darkness, a pair of glowing eyes... Who are you? Sir?